Hey, hi, hello. My name is Jupiter. Welcome to my corner of the internet. I got Ooh. Spiff again. Uh, so, this is Dreamcatcher Part 2. I brought the boy back to do the introduction. Intro. Um, I'm really sorry. I had to cut it up into two parts. There's a lot of songs. They've got a lot of songs. Please don't hate me if this ends up becoming three parts. Hopefully y'all are enjoying this enough that that would be a possibility. Because we talk a lot more than I thought we did. So, um, last time we covered songs 79 through 50. I will try to put them up on the screen here for you as like a brief refresher. I won't leave them up long, so like pause if you really wanted to see the intensity of our lists. Um... But we'll be picking up from song 49 in this video. All the audio is the previous recorded audio from that very first session that I used in the first video, very naively thinking I could do this all in one big long three to four hour video. That was my original goal, believe it or not. <laughs> it's a slow video. It's a long video. When I originally designed the debut project, I also thought I would do that in like three to four videos. Uh. Uh, no one can estimate how much I can talk. Not me, at least. So, here's the video. We're going to pick up on number 49. It's Please enjoy. Middle. It's the middle. It's the mushy it's middle the mushy bit. Middle. Please enjoy our opinions. Alright, see you at the end. Bye. Thanks for watching. Let's do it. Going into number 49. Number 49, welcome, welcome to the middle. Both of us have been discussing how the middle is very hard. Because there's the songs you're like, yeah, I don't have big feelings about this. And at the top you're like, oh my god. And then there's the middle mush. They're all good. They're, They're all just in the middle. They're just in the middle. So 49 is where I have in the Frozen. Okay. Um, I always forget how this song starts. Like every time it comes on, I have to check which song it is. Because what I think of is that EDM breakdown. And that's mm -hmm. not the it whole does have, song. It like an icy start. Which it's I got like. an icy start. Then it has that like really empty and kind of twinkly bridge, and then Dami's like chanting over that bridge, which is very good. Mm -hmm. This whole song really isn't as heavy as I think I always mentally picture it to be. I think yeah. of it like a trap, and it's not. It's, it's a little not. bit lighter than that, and that's okay. Yeah, I just don't remember it right, and that's okay. I like it to the, in the frozen because Tria language is all bangers. <laughs> uh, Forty nine for me is July seventh. Okay. I don't know what they put in this song. They like sprinkled just a little bit of crack cocaine on the top. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, it's not a song that I would normally like, but for some reason it's really addictive and. It kind of hooks you in, and I, I think it's just kind of like the sweeping back and forth notes and melodies that it's just catchy. Oh, yeah. Number 48, Can't Get You Out of My Mind. This is an all English track, which always surprises me because it feels just kind of out of nowhere to just be like, this is our all English track as mm. a B-side. Also, I think that you could have put this in the clubs in like 2010s yeah. um, and people would absolutely be vibing to it. Uh, I remember the chorus really well and I completely forget about the beep drop that happens pre-chorus. I just forget that part ex exists. Um, I, I, it's it's a, like a point of pe pointillism piece of synth work. It's very like pinpoint mm -hmm. sounds, and I'm into that. 
Sparkly. Dreamcatcher's a lot of sparkly songs. A lot of sparkly. 48 for me is where Playground ended up. Um, my notes for this just say Gahyo and I would die for you, <laughs> which <laughs> is accurate. I really love this song. This song makes me smile every time. I think her little interjections are so cute. Is it true? Exactly. And I think it's just like, it's a very sweet, comfortable song. Um, she feels so comfy. Exactly. It's so cute. And I love her. And I would die for her. <laughs> it's just, this is where we get into the ones where it's like, I love all of these songs. It's just, I love all of them. So some of them have to be... They can't all be number one. Can't all be number one. Uh, 57. Here is where I put Paradise, which is one of Xion's solos. It's kind of the first solo work in any of the Dreamcatcher discography, as far as I know, besides like covers and YouTube features. Uh, <laughs> is very good and listening to the song really reminds me how good it is because it sounds very good even when it's in just this classic pop context mm -hmm. and there's kind of these like spectral background vocals happening that they're they're very underneath the track but they're so good and her voice is so bright on top of those spectral sound sounds I just love that she can sound so good even in a relatively basic song Hey God, I think I. Uh, my fifty-seven is paradise. Hey, forty-seven. It's 47. Oh, oh, we're on forty-seven. My bad. Um, nice. <laughs> I was curious if any of these would happen. Didn't we have one already, or were they one off? They were one off. Okay. Um, this is a good song. She and sounds amazing. I think I would have preferred it if it wasn't a solo song, mm. which is. Nothing against Sheehan, like I think she's amazing and I think she carries it completely by herself. She doesn't need anyone else. Yeah. But I think I just, it would have, like, added a little extra oomph that I feel like the song is missing. Or not necessarily that it's missing, but that's not, that's why it's not higher. I think if you have all the members there, you just get can't get you out of my mind. No. They're very, the songs are very similar in my brain. Even though they're not the same song, my brain conflates them. Okay. Interesting. It's fine, should I have not said that? I feel like I'm being judged, though. I just don't know what you mean. You can say whatever you want. It's your channel. I, you no, know, it's going on the internet. People might not have that opinion. This is true. This is true. Uh, anyway, number 50. Six. Six. Forty-six. 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 This is where I put winter. I really do love winter. Um, this was in my top three when we did that Save Us review originally, and I stand by this is maybe one of my favorite uh one of my favorite of the solos it's that i think i listen to some of the other ones more mm -hmm. i listen to all the cuter ones um but i wrote a nice review for this one so i'm going to read it out now and it's that winter is like getting dressed to go outside on a cold day so you're kind of putting on all of your basics just one layer at a time you've got your percussion and then you put on the guitar and the vocals and the piano and then there's that cute little like bird song and static as accessories just on top of everything and when you have all those things together it makes a very cohesive and a nice outfit and then you're ready to kind of go out 
It's just simple and pretty, and I really enjoy Han Dong singing for long periods of time since her vocal role tends to be a few lines within the verses. So you still get to hear her, and that's great, but this is really nice to let her get a whole song. And I will always get goosebumps when you hit the last few lines and she switches languages and she starts singing in Chinese. I Every time. Goosebumps. Um, my number 46 is winter. No! <laughs> I really thought this was going to be higher for you because I know it was one of your favorites. I, and you again, kinda, you, it's a ca- again, it's a case of... Yeah, no, I understand. Oh, they have so many good songs. You kind of changed my mind on this song because I used to not like it very much and then you kind of pointed out how it was like good in really subtle ways. Yeah. Um... So, I mostly agree with what you said, so instead I'm gonna use this as Hondong Appreciation Hour. Yeah. <laughs> because even though I don't list it, I don't list her as one of my biases, I do really love her, and I feel like she's kind of a sleeper hit. Like, <sighs> you don't know, you don't tend to notice her at first, and then, like, she kind of comes out of nowhere, and you're like, oh wait, she's really talented, and I should have been giving her credit this whole time. And I think this song kind of proves that she can't hold her own. She really can hold her own. Mm-hmm. 45! Uh, this is on Jupiter's list is where I put Break the Wall. Come on, break the wall. It's a 2012 Paramore song. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and in fact, that's the, all the music I listened to in high school. Um, it's great. It's not what- I think this is a song I tend to forget about. When it's on, I'm absolutely mm-hmm. jamming. When it is not on, I'm thinking about different Dreamcatcher songs. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, 40- 40, 45? 45. 45? is the number we're on, and it's also the number that I put Whistle. Oh, okay. Uh, ended up pretty high. I used to, like, not necessarily like this song. Um, and then I kind of listened to it again and got a better appreciation for it and realized that even though it's kind of a more mellow song, they're like, they're really going off. Like They go real hard for Whistle. No one asked them to. No, they didn't need to do that. And they gave it their all. And it sounds really good. And I love the emotion in their voices. And I kind of... It, it never reaches this big peak like their other songs, but it drives the whole time and it never loses my interest. So 44, I think this is my first title we're hitting here, because this mm. is where I have Deja Vu. Um, it's, this song is very delicate, and it's really satisfying when it hits the chorus, and I think the build that is in this song is very well-deserved and well-crafted. The pre-chorus is excellent, uh, the high notes are super pretty, the string line, A plus to the string line, the final chorus release, also fantastic. Uh, I think... What puts this as the f- the lowest title for me is that I wish it had a longer falling action, so to speak. Because, like, it goes really hard in that final chorus. Yeah. And then it does it's have just... a f- out- fade-out outro section, but it's not very long. I wish they'd brought that longer. I think also just the general softer co- verses mm-hmm. do not hit the same way some of their other verses do. 45 for me. 44. 44. My numbers are off. It's okay. It's fine. 44 is my way. (laughs) 
Okay, it's significantly higher than mine. Significantly higher than yours. Um, I think I'm just more... More... What's it, what's it called? Pre... Pre... Exposed. Pre... Pre... When you're... <laughs> I know how words work. <laughs> Predisposed. That doesn't sound right. I believe you, but it doesn't sound right. <laughs> Hold on. I as a person am more likely to like this kind of music than you as a person is, I think. I'm always going to lean more towards the heavy ones. I'm always going to lean more towards the rock ones. And in general, I like the... Um, Japanese releases because I think they're a little bit weirder and I like that they experiment a little bit more. That being said, I think this one is the lowest of the Japanese um, releases for me just because I don't think it particularly stands out more than the other ones. Making this 43 is where I've put Diamond. A lot higher. A lot higher. Uh, the percussion line is my favorite part of this song. It really yeah. supports the whole thing. Um, and I think the percussion is in a constant state of change in motion throughout this song. It's really noticeable when they hit the rap break. Like, the percussion instruments totally change. Um, I do like the rap in yeah. Diamond. Yes, in my notes I have written, yes, Dami. So I don't think I need to say more That's than that. That's just any time Dami raps, though. <laughs> You know, fair point. This song also has a good sense of pause. Like, it has a good balance between the vocal and instrumental parts. I've been noticing a lot more songs want to just run and run and run, and if there's no singing, they that the song doesn't exist. And this song has a very good interplay between letting there be a rest in the vocal part. It feels very well constructed to me. 43 for me is Some Love. Which, yeah, is a song I feel like should be higher, because I really like it. There's just so many good songs. Uh, I like how funky it is. I like... Yeah, I like how funky it is. It's funky. <laughs> it's funky. She funky. That's it. That's it. You'll I... probably have better commentary. Mm, I don't know if I will, but what I can... I have excellent commentary in this one, such as number 42, which is where I put Endless Night. And I have She's So Excellent, High Energy, Over the Top Symbol Use, Killer Vocals, Head Empty, No Thoughts, Just Vibes. <laughs> This is my review of Endless Night. Okay. 43 for me is together. Which I think I put much higher. You put than higher you than did. I did. I've already discussed together. Yes. Yeah. Which is surprising to me. Um. This is a song that surprises me that I like, because it is very much a pop song. Um, we call this album the Roller Rink song, uh, or the Roller Rink album, because it has this song in Star Starlight, yeah. which to me just feel like very twinkly and kind of 80s, and like, I just want to roll around in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Strap on your skates, boys! Exactly. We're going skating! Exactly. It's good. Shooting star, shooting star. Coming in at number 41 for me is where I have put Cherry. Or re 
video. Miracle Jew Solo. Um, we need more idols writing songs about their dogs. I've said it once and I will say it again. It's peppy and cute. I think this one is like a Luna song. I think Luna could perform this song very well. Oh, boys. Tell me about your dog. <laughs> Tell me about your dog. Uh, it feels like a sip of soda. It's bubbly and refreshing. Yeah. 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 This is where I put breaking out. Okay. I like, I really like, I like heavy things. I like, like the heavy drums. I like the heavy, what's it called? Guitar. <laughs> um, I do think it feels a little bit empty on some of the verses, but overall, it's a good song. Head empty, no thoughts. Uh, number 40, which is not exactly the halfway point because we have an odd number, but it's approximately a halfway point is where I have put airplane. Go up into the sky. Go up into the sky. Again, this song is for the vibes. I just feel very good on the inside listening to this song. I love them trying new things, having fun with it. I've been explaining to Spiff that this song sounds like a Red Velvet song to me. This could be a like a summer B-side from them. If anyone else agrees with me or has different thoughts, please comment or help me articulate why I think that. Because I feel very strongly about this, but I don't have the words to say why. It's just big Red Velvet vibes, and Dreamcatcher did it really good. Airplane go up into the sky. I don't, I don't dislike this song. There's just so many things that could have gone in this slot that you put lower than airplane <laughs> that are airplane. 40 is where I put the curse of the spider. Let's get move out! <laughs> No, those are some good lyrics. <laughs> I I like I love the instrumentals for this. I think that's my favorite part about the song. Mm -hmm. Um I like the vocals. I like when they shout. <laughs> it gets me hyped. It doesn't quite reach the pitches of some of their most hype, you know, title tracks, but mm -hmm. I think it's a good middling B side. Oh, you haven't had a title track yet, have you? You're... I don't. You are very dedicated to Dreamcatcher title tracks, I feel, though. It's why I listen to Dreamcatcher. Fair point. We're coming up, though. We're coming up. All right, so 39, then, for me, is where I have put Playground. Okay. Um, Gahyun's little Is It True is the highlight of the song. It's so cute. I will listen it's to so the song sweet. over and over again just to get to that moment. Um... I think, yeah, you described it very well. It's a cute pop song. It's bubblegum. I love that she's announcing that she feels comfy. Mm -hmm. It's great. We love Playground. I like, yeah, I like specifically how she talks about love. Like, mm -hmm. it's just comfy and nice as opposed to something being, like, really bomb bombastic and amazing. Like, I think it's nice to have a song that's just, like... We're just gonna sit in this comfortable moment together. Mm -hmm. um, 39 is where I put Starlight. Aha! Uh -huh. The other roller rink song. The other roller rink song. Excellent. That's my review. It's good. It's another kind of twinkly, sort of retro feeling pop song. Um, I think this and together, I feel like all of their pop songs, honestly, the reason why I like them is that I feel like they are a bit complex. Like, I feel the same way about Red Velvet. Like, 
it's not just, hey, we're just all gonna sing the same melody and put it over some instrumentals and like, there's your song. It's like, we do, we harmonize and we have different little interjections and noises that we are throwing in and we're taking care to like, really make this song something that ties into itself really well. And it's something I in general appreciate about their music. Y'all can't see me, but I'm nodding vigorously. <laughs> Coming in at number 38, this is where I've put Whistle. Okay. It's got whistle notes. It's super catchy. It's, they whistle. They whistle. I think this song just... This is the song that is the color of the limited edition, that bright sky blue. It's a perfect summer song. We were listening to this one in the car just the other day. And it feel that it's just the right energy for being in the car on a beautiful summer day. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Good driving song. Good driving song. 37. Right? 38. 38 for me is Wake Up. Come to me, baby. Wake up, wake up, I like the song. I feel like it's almost on the level of a title track. Oh, okay. Which is why it's up here in the in the mids. Mm -hmm. um, I I I don't know. I just really like the chorus. I like wake up, wake up, and then I like how they do it again, but higher. <laughs> and it's like, oh shit, we're getting hyped in here. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake the fuck up. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Excellent. Number 37, this is where I have put Scream. Is this my favorite Dreamcatcher title track? No, it's not. Will I behave like it is my favorite title track when it comes on? A hundred and ten percent. I love that this track is just haunted by its own background vocals. Like, it's echoing and floating. It's winding up and down. It's kind of following the zoetrope of a melody. And then it's just drowned out by the bass in the chorus. Devil Eyes Come is iconic, and I stand by it. Um... 37 is where I've put fairy tale. Number They sprung a leak. <laughs> Sorry, number 37. I can say numbers with my mouth is fairy tale. <laughs> Which to me, fairy tale, starlight, and together are kind of the same category as song for me. Um, I like them all very much. I think I like this one slightly more because I really like the vocal performance and I feel like it kind of soars above the instrumentals and it kind of gives you like a, a hopeful feeling that drives forward. Very good. So next up we have number 36 and on my list this is where I have put Silent Night. It's a really sparkly song, it's crystalline, like pretty to look at, hard to the touch, and I really love the breakdown in in the bridge. Um, she's an EDM banger. I love that, you know? I'm into it. I don't have a lot more to say besides that. Just like to bop my head, you know? I'm choking on an oyster cracker. <laughs> it's my turn, so I swallowed it, but it's pointy and it hurt me. 
This, maybe we shouldn't have snacks, but it's too late now. No, this is going in the video. Okay, great. Uh, number 36 is where I put, I miss you. Oh, that's a little higher than mine. <laughs> It's a little higher. Listen, um, before I knew what K-pop was, mm -hmm. there was J-pop. This is what I was raised on, so this you, just you sounds were on it? normal. Yes. My father would work in the mines <laughs> to bring me one J-pop disc uh -huh. every day. Mm -hmm. Um... So this just sounds like a straight banger to me. I don't want to tell you. It's catchy. It is. We, we sing it all the time because it gets stuck in our heads. We do. And I love kind of the combination of heavy instrumentals with this kind of lighter chorus. This lighter catchy chorus. All right. Good song. It's a good song. It's a good song. 35. Wake up. She's real hype. And I love it. And I love that there's that little pause in the instruments and it's just vocals for just a second and then it drops right into the chorus. It's just the right amount of tension and it is so short, but it's then you get that really nice release with the drum set and then heavy rhythm like all kicking in. This is a drum set song, uh, very good. The cymbals are also very appreciated. Enthusiastic use of the cymbals is what I have written down here. <laughs> the cymbal, oh. Yeah. Like the instrument. Like the instrument. And not like the theory of icons. <laughs> no. Okay. No, we're talking about <laughs> songs, remember? <laughs> That's why I was confused. I was like, what are you seeing when you listen to this song that I am not seeing? <laughs> Um, 35 for me, I think this is my first title. Okay. Is what? Oh, okay. Um, it's a good song. I appreciate how heavy it is. I do, I think it's my least favorite of the titles because they doesn't really have a chorus. They just kind of yell what at you. Yeah. And I wish there was a little more than them just yelling what at me. Um, but that being said, I do like the what's because they are very intense and they do get me hyped. I just wish maybe they uh, were like, the pre the preview to the chorus like they then mm. wrapped into something where they actually sang very intensely okay well title to title i have so i have a title in my number 34 spot which is where i put chase me Um, really? I, don't, I don't think the world is ready for Chase Me when it came out. Uh, I, the piano opening, obviously iconic, and then it just builds into this fast paced and fast choreo. The background vocals I really love, where they're like echoing along to the main, they'll repeat after the main chorus line and all of that, fill in the space, shouting out dangerous, just dangerous. I love to do, love to sing that part. It's very fun to sing back to this song, but as it is Dreamcatcher, they just have a lot of good songs. Mm -hmm. Um, 34? 34. 34, I have Endless Night. Okay. Which I think is my favorite of the Japanese releases, so it has everything I like about them. It's a little bit weirder, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more intense. I've written that I, it's, you've got like these really heavy instrumental guitars, and then the vocals are also intense, but they're a lot brighter than a normal Dreamcatcher song in a way that's 
you only really find in Japanese yeah. pop songs that I don't really know how to describe. They lean really hard into J-pop when they do a Japanese release, and I love it. They're not yeah. just doing K-pop in Korean, they're doing J-pop. Yeah, and I think it really works overall. And then, so that's 34, this is yes. 33, that's where I put tension. Uh, it, this one is off of Tree of Language, but I feel like it's really reminiscent of an older Dreamcatcher sound. Like, you could put this as a Fly Higher or Good Night B-side, and I think it could slot right in very nicely. It's, it's very catchy, and the song itself is just... It's just bursting at the seams with so much energy for the whole runtime, and mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. This is just part of my bias towards the tree of language in general. It's a good album. Banger after banger after banger. 33 for me is where I put beautiful. Okay. I love Dami. This is a great song. I said to you when it came out, this is just a Paramore song. It is a Paramore song, but that's okay. Um, I do think it's a little bit... This sounds very rude, but juvenile. Mm. Just in terms of lyrics and that old Paramore sound. I don't know how else to describe that, but... You know what I mean? I get what angle you're at, yeah. Which, by the way, I don't dislike any of these songs, and when I'm saying a criticism about them, it's just to justify why they ended up lower than other songs. Yes. Which because there's so many songs, and they're all good, so I do really like this song. Yeah, I feel like this is the part of the ranking where, st where we're starting to hit those points of like, wow, I thought this song would be so much higher. And then you like put another song above it and above it, and suddenly it ended up way lower than you thought it would, even though it's a good song. Exactly. We're in that bit of the middle. Like if you just We're in the played... bottom of the top now as we hit the 30s. If you just played this song for me, I would be like, wow, I love this song. This is one of my favorite Dreamcatcher songs. And then it's 33. <laughs> and then it's 33. <laughs> Number 32 on Jupiter's list is Wind Blows. Uh, I just like a chant chorus. I'm not quite sure why I love this one so much. I really cannot articulate it. I think it has something to do with just how dense it feels. Like, you can feel the weight of this song. I'll describe a lot of Dreamcatcher songs as heavy. But like the heavy isn't the right word for it, even though that is a quality it has. Like you have this really soft pre-chorus, and then it builds into that huge chant chorus. And I, I am a fan. Yeah, it's a good song. It's a good song. Thirty-two for me is where Deja Vu ended up. Okay. Um, it's a great song. I love this song. I, the reason I like it is also simultaneously the reason it ended up a little bit lower than the others, which is it, it has these very like soft in between bits mm -hmm. um, that can slow down the song just a little bit. Um, and overall, I think it affects the pacing, even though I do think you need those slower bits to really like hype up the extra bits even more, which is something they will return to later on in their career. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and they do very well, but yeah. Dreamcatcher has very good peaks and valleys as a whole. Yeah, it's a good way of explaining it. I like to pull apart most, uh, mo most art mediums, even stories, as mm -hmm. like that idea of the rising action should have little scoops cut into it. Mm -hmm. It's not just a straight line upwards and then a straight line downwards. Yeah. 
And I think Dreamcatcher finds that push and pull very nicely. It's something I talked a lot when I did Pixie too, of that there's these little scoops and like push and pulls within the song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this song starts out very soft, yeah. and then it builds, and then it ends soft, which is mm -hmm. something I like about it, is they yes. just kind of leave it on this, like, melancholy moment. Yeah. Yeah, she leaves it on a high, and I feel like it goes high, and you kind of expect it to, like, go down one note, and she just, just goes up, and then holds it, and mm -hmm. then that's it. I don't want to watch the Deja Vu music video again. <laughs> 31 is where I've put Fly High. Big anime opening energy with this one. We've got the amazing strings. It's nice and consistent. The, te the, temp the guitar, I think, is what drives the tempo in this one. And I love that it, at this point it showed a bit more depth to that rock concept beyond what they had done before. Mm -hmm. This was their first mini album and they were selling well enough to do a third comeback in a year. If everyone, in case you didn't know, the entire horror trilogy I'm pretty sure came out in 2017, which is very impressive oh, I to me. Oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah. When I was looking it up, all three albums were in 2017. Hmm. Um... But it just shows more depth to that concept that they were putting it out, and that makes me very excited. Also, there's Dami's that it's like a big black hole in my heart. Absolutely in the nightmare. Yeah, it just goes hard. I love that line. And I, again, I, do I don't like know why. That. It might be that little bit of draw of English as a western, as a western listener, as a western, as a western. <laughs> Yeehaw! That is something they do kind of frequently that I like, that it's just like, we're gonna say some spooky shit in the middle of our song, and then keep doing the song. <laughs> and then carry on, yeah. I was like, ooh, spooky. Spooky. You did your 31. That was my 31. No, it's my 31, which is Break the Wall. Oh, okay. I really like this song. I think it's, um, when you look at the album. I don't remember which one it's, it's called, but I'll it's- lose myself. Okay, this it's the Boca's one Boca's album. off of, and I think it's a good follow-up to Boca, and mm. like, gives the good flavor and texture to the dystopian concept overall, because you're getting some kind of idea of like, okay, there's some kind of wall or oppressive force that they're trying to get through. Yeah. So I- I like it as a B-side specifically to Boca. Okay. And other than that, I just like the song itself and I like like the chorus, come on break the wall, isn't that complex? Mm -hmm. um, but they just sing it very forcefully and it's over very heavy instrumentation and it's like overall a very exciting, powerful song, I think. Right, we've entered the top 30 now, and I think this is where things start to get very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so number 30 is where I have... This is a song that was I was like, oh god, I love this song, it's gonna go so high, and then it, it didn't. It's number 30, which is in the top half, is Odd Eye. <laughs> I know! They just have so many good songs! <laughs> this is true. The chorus is relatively simple, but I do love the heavy bass in Odd Eye, and then like the pre-chorus where everything starts to really pop off, and the final chorus, oh my god, title- Dreamcatcher title track, final choruses. <laughs> oh. It goes really hard. I wish they went even a little harder, because I know they can. Yeah. And I, I, I want more, because I know they can do it. I do think they hit it pretty hard at the end. Oh, is it my turn? It's your turn now, that's all I have to say. <laughs> I, Odd Eye is one of those songs that I love so much that I can't talk very much about. Um, my 30 is Full Moon. Okay. 
I don't actually have a lot to say about this one. Um, yeah, I like the chorus. To me, this just feels like average Dreamcatcher song. <laughs> like if you melted them all together, this is what it would be like. So it mm. ended up in the middle. I see. Because I like what Dreamcatcher sounds like. So I like this song. Alright. 29. 29 is where I put Rose Blue. Okay. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's what I was waiting for. Everyone in the world is wrong about Rose Blue except for me, who is right all the time. <laughs> Hey, spoiler alert, Rose Blue's gonna be in his top five. I haven't seen his list, but I'm made calling that shot now. Um, yeah. Uh, at the draw of Rose Blue, I love that pull away from the chorus. Like, they're going hard in the chorus, and then they just drop it all and deliver the line Rose Blue. It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit of an ethereal quality to it, which is fun for a video game concept. Like, especially after it's, like, being held. This song is held together with so many instruments, and it's, like, chugging and chugging along. And then just stop for a minute. It's also got a beautiful orchestral bridge. I, I love the bridge of this song. And then mm -hmm. you've got the timpani and the chanting, the choral chanting. Oof. She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's rose blue. She's rose blue. Eclipse. I think, uh, much for the same reasoning of Full Moon, mm -hmm. they're kind of the same song to me. Okay. I think you've sort of been poisoned on these two by Spotify just playing it all the time. Yeah. Uh, that has not happened to me, so I appreciate them fully for what they are. <laughs> oh good. I'm glad. Someone's gotta do it. Yes. Number 28 is where I have put July 7th. Um. This might be a little high. I can't decide. It's one of those songs that every time I put it on, I really just enjoy it for what it is. It's the Calypso drum, and I love how that song sound just permeates the whole song and carries it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've got whistles in this song, which I'm a fan of. It's just so, it's gentle and bouncy, and I think their voices just sound so good. Like, it's this song is such a flex without doing any wild belting or anything mm. like that. Yeah, it's like the idea that singing quiet and soft is harder than like singing loud and powerful. Yeah, having a sm being small and controlled is also a form of mastery over something mm -hmm. in a way that it doesn't get recognized, like especially in singing and dancing and like musical instruments and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that song. Um, 27 for me is Scream. I just want to make you scream. <laughs> that one. That one. That one. Scream is great. I love the, like, background voice of this strange man mm. just yelling spooky things at you. Devil. Eyes. Cove. Exactly. Close. I think that's very fun. We love it. We love a spooky moment in our Dreamcatcher songs. We really do. Um, I just think this one is very EDM heavy, which is always just going to end up a little bit lower than the less EDM heavy ones, for me, personally. That being said, I do think it, she is iconic. And she really is. <laughs> I do love the music video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do think she's a good intro into this dystopia yeah. series because it's like, it's kind of like, okay, we're doing something different, but it's still got those spooky vibes. So it's kind of like a good bridge into I think, the yeah. new, kind of newer style. Yeah, Chase Me, exactly. Chase Me is a, was representative of their debut and going forward, but if you were going to get in dream, into Dreamcatcher now... 
I'd probably start pointing them towards Scream because Scream is maybe a little more representative of some of the title tracks they're producing now. Mm -hmm. Not exactly, because the latest, they've gone a little bit more back to that rock. I, I feel like now they're kind of a mix in between yes. those two things. Yeah. Like they've settled on a good version of both. Maybe you should just start at Cuz. <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> or you should start at the beginning so you can listen to all these good songs. You know what? Fair point. Number 27, heading back into the roller rink with Starlight. We have our little dimp. A little dip into the synthwave genre, and they just they just do it so good. I feel they do it good. They do every genre well. They really do. I've already mentioned that's the roller disco song. I like this song is just like neon lights and 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 fairy like twinkling fairy lights all at once. I love the little runs in the chorus, the way they deliver the word starlight, and I really love that kind of bridge last chorus of you're warm like sunshine you shine even without the moonlight i just think it's so cute it's really adorable <laughs> my 27 mm -hmm. is you and i hey, oh my. Excellent. Um, my notes for this song is doorbell because it has a doorbell at the beginning and it scares me every time <laughs> I hear this song. Even if I'm in the car, I'm like, who's ringing my doorbell? It's, it's Dreamcatcher. They're, they're here. <laughs> they're ringing my doorbell. This, this is all my important notes about this song. <laughs> It's okay, I'm pretty sure I wrote about the doorbell in my song, in my ranking of that one, too. It's a good song. It's a good song. Alright, and then, so that was 27, this is 26, which is where I have The Curse of the Spider. Mm. I admittedly don't know how to articulate what I like about this song very much. It just kind of goes hard from its opening notes, and then keeps on running. I love singing along to the chorus. You just need to yell, focus me, look at me. Feels very good. It's just this bold demand of attention, and it's very fun and fast pace. These electric guitars just zipping underneath. Uh, this is a sing on the way to work kind of song to get ready for the day. Yeah. I do love the instruments of that song. Okay, mm for me, I have Peary. <laughs> I like the industrial feel, I guess mm. is what I would call this. Okay. It opens with like, almost like a tornado siren. Yeah. <laughs> this one feels to me like it should be in the Dystopia trilogy. Oh. Like it has those vibes. Um, it and is I, in that weird interlude, mm -hmm. when those interlude eras. Yeah. Um, and it, I like the kind of the whistling yeah. in the background is like halfway through between a whistle and some kind of synth. I don't mm -hmm. know what's making that sound, but it's very catchy and it like drives the whole song forward. Yes, I believe Piri, it either means alarm or flute. Those are two different words. They are. <laughs> I, I don't remember off the top of my head now. I can look it up and I'll put something in I mean, post. both of those make sense. But yeah, so that's why the, the lines of the song is like, ring the alarm. Mm -hmm. Emergency, emergency. Emergency, emergency. Um, I will say this one and you and I, they're very close because not much of a chorus on either of them. True. We just kind of repeat some words and then have some instrumentals go. And the instrumentals are very good. I like them. Um, but that's why there are title tracks that ended up above them. Fair enough. 25, Poison Love. It is 
slow and silky and synthy. It just it just hits right every time for me. And again, their songs are their voices are low and controlled so that they're showing off in just a different fashion. I very much I really love Poison Love. I know he already gave his take on it. I love Poison Love. Big fan. I I'm a fan of the concept of the song. I just don't want to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool if you want to listen to it. Cuz I think they're doing neat things. Okay. 25. 25 is vision. <laughs> Vision's a good song. I really like the instrumentals. I also like the choreo where they're d like doing drill, like mm -hmm. straight up military slash marching band drill. Like I'm pretty sure I've done that move in marching <laughs> band before. Um, I think this song just suffers from coming after my song. Mm. My song. My song. My song. And you're channel your inner French your your inner Frenchman, just don't say the letters. Oh we oui, oui. What's all Maison? What's all? Oui, oui. Uh -huh. Um I think that song just hits so hard that having this song come after it, it just didn't hit me as much. Yeah. But yeah, I really like the sweeping instrumentals. It sounds like a soundtrack from a superhero movie, which is Appropriate. Yes. Twenty-four is where I is where I have put and there was no one left. A little different than yours. You say pointedly in I, my direction. I know. <laughs> Everyone, I think you have to understand that we are currently sitting on a love seat, like staring at each other while we're staring giving these into reviews. Each other's eyes. Yes. Lovingly. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Maybe sometimes. Not. Sometimes. Right now, I'm avoiding his gaze as I say where this song is. Um, but I just love when they dabble in that like dreamy synth pop sound. It's weird for their discography, and it's very. Fun. They've got that bass line blending nicely with the vocal line soaring above it. The runs in this song are great. And I love the little, oh, I have written that, like, hoo 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 in the second verse is kind of part of the, it just sounds so good. <laughs> it's very good. Oh, that might have been the I'm... wrong song. They do a lot of little flourishes, but I love the flourishes. I'm not mad that they do synth pop because I think they do it well because they do everything well and it's like it's baked into their song I just think that song there's something very 2000s about it that I can't Probably. that I can't shake I can't shake the specter of the 2000s <laughs> looming over my shoulder Whatever number that was, 24. Yup. This is, okay. This is where we start getting into songs that I have nothing bad to say about, I think. That's fine. Like. Bring on, baby. This is the, these are the top, these are the creams of the crop. Mm. And a lot of them, it was very hard to place. <laughs> and a lot of them were very close together. So, don't get mad that when I say this is where Red Sun goes. Is this where Red Sun goes? Yes. Oh my god. Were you expecting it higher? It, I just love Red Sun. I do too. It's a great song. It's very high on my list. I love the, like, little unofficial music video they did for it. 
Um, they do have a performance video for this. A one. performance video. Yes. Where they're all in their red outfits. Yes. Yes. I do love that video. Um, because it's got choreo, so they were showing off the choreo. Mm-hmm. You made me lose my train of thought. How dare you? This is definitely a you problem. Uh huh. I problem. absolutely contributed to this. Red Sun is number 24. It was hard to put it here. Yes. I like the chorus. I like the repeating of Red Sun. Exactly. See, I know I like knocked what for just repeating words, <laughs> but I like it here. I can't tell you why. I think maybe it bothers me less when it's a B-side, um, because it can be more, in my mind, like more experimental. Mm -hmm. and. I think it should, they, they just came up with a really cool song concept that's pretty different than anything else you hear really in K-pop or anywhere, and then they executed it really well. Red song sounds so good. It's so good. And then we have 23, which is where I put my song. Oh, it's it's just it's loud and funky and it really that intro really does sound like a superhero crashing into the planet and I love that choral chanting cannot be beat I know Spiff will say more about it when we get there so I'll leave that for him it's just heavenly and uh, this three this song reminded me how much I love Dreamcatcher when it came out mm -hmm. like it the song, like, when this song came out and kicked off this trilogy, mm -hmm. it, like, re rewired my brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, you're gonna be mad at me again. I... that's okay. You're gonna be upset. I... you know what? I'm sure I will be. It's... okay. This is Jazz Bar. Ah, uh, that's what I knew you were gonna say. Alright, okay. It's fine. I'm not upset. It's fine. I love this song. This is a great song. It's so soft. Mm -hmm. I love that they just made a jazz song and called it Jazz Bar and it was like, here's our jazz song we on, did our, it. on our techno rock album because they're insane. Um. <laughs> Jazz bar. I had more words to say. Oh, tell me about jazz bar then. I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying real hard. Okay. I think it just like, it's a very comfortable song. Mm -hmm. You just kind of sit in it and it flows over you. And I really like the words and the lyrics and how they like minorly change to make this groove that you just slot into. Mm -hmm. I, and I wish it was higher. It's just, it's mellow and not a banger. And we're gonna get bangers. We're about, we are hitting bangers. I had to make right room for every title track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Number 20, 22 or 23? 22. 22. I think. Okay, folks, we gotta double check the number. No, 22. Wait. Yes. Oh, my numbers are right again. You and I! Oh, okay. Um, so if I haven't made it clear yet throughout this, I love sounds and songs, and this has a doorbell! Previously discussed! <laughs> um, and I really love the pre-chorus to this song. It just builds in with this, like, super high range, this delicate melody. You've got the, oh, no. And then drops into the chorus uh screaming you and i along to this song feels very good and it is a healing experience like a lot of their title tracks have that quality of like i'm going to like scream and or chant along to it and it, mm -hmm. it heals your soul a little bit but this one this one feels especially good mm -hmm. uh 22 for me is wind blows oh 
which is one I thought would be higher. But it's just they have twenty other good songs. They have twenty other good songs. Um, again, I really like the chanting chorus. This is this one is Red Sun to me, but more. Okay. Um, because it's got kind of that chanting chorus, but they've done it really intense this time, mm-hmm. and I like the instrumentation. Did you already do Wind Blows? I did already do Wind Blows. Okay. So mine is higher than yours. Either. Yes, and I'm surprised. I, I, for some reason, thought that I liked this one more than you. Hmm. I don't know. That might have been the case at some point in time. Possibly so. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it does kind of go against all of the reasons I've put for putting songs lower. Like, yeah. it doesn't really have a chorus. It's just chanting over heavy instrumentation. Um, but every time I hear this song, I'm like, hell yeah. Wind blows. Wind blows, dude! Wind blows. I also, I like that it's, again, I like that it comes after Odd Eye. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, this just might be me making shit up, but it feels like, okay, we have the wall. Yeah. And now we're gonna blow down the wall. Uh-huh. Or at least try to. And it, I feel like it just adds to the story. Someone's ringing our doorbell. Oh, that, one, that one wasn't ours. It was too quiet. <laughs> it's Dreamcatcher. It's Dreamcatcher. They're here. 21. Vision. Okay. I, I really like the intensity of this song. The snare drum is very good here. They've got a lot of, like, excellent percussion just kind of hiding in this song. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's loud and metal-coated. It is bearing arms, and it's ready for battle. Like... This is exactly, it is its concept, and I love that. Yeah. It's so powerful. In terms of a trilogy, it makes sense. It does. It's place in the trilogy, and it completes its its goal. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I don't have more to say on it. It's just good. Okay. 21 for me is where I put Shadow. <laughs> Is a song I think you placed lower than me. Uh huh. Um, which I think just because it's a little more obscure, yeah, probably I not a lot of people have listened to it. I don't it, go with for OSTs very often. I don't dig them out very much. Yeah. And that's just a me thing. I think if you haven't heard this song and you're a Dreamcatcher song, you should go listen to this song. Because you would like it. <laughs> it's a. It's a duet between Dami and Sheehan, who have the two best voices, my two favorite voices in Dreamcatcher. I'm not going to say they're the best, because everyone has a good voice. Everyone has very good voices. They really are like seven lead vocals. Oh, yes. Even Dami the rapper is also lead vocal material, and she finally gets the chance to prove it in this song. She can fucking belt it out like the rest of them. Um... I'm thinking about that. She should have gone on Second World with where all the female rappers show off that they can sing. I feel like she would have done very well on that show. She would have. She's just so cool. <laughs> I love Dami. Um, I just really like this song. I think it's a little bit eerie. I think it's a little more... Um, it doesn't stand out as being super complex until you really turn an ear to it and you Mm -hmm. kind of notice all the little strange little discordant choices that they made through Mm -hmm. the song, which makes sense because it was for a drama about zombies or something. that's what the music video is telling me. That's what the music video is about. I don't know anything about the show, um, except for this song, which which, which rules. It kicks ass. (laughs) And that's where I'm going to leave it for now. I know, I'm sorry there is going to be a part three, but when I laid out all of the audio track, this was going to be a three and a half hour video, and I could not do that, because that was before I even put in all the song snippets. So, that's where I'm going to leave it for part two. We will pick up in part three, hopefully very soon, hopefully in a similar time range of about three weeks, that 
don't quote me on that because I'm living a life outside of making these videos and it's tiring. But part three will be up soon and then we will hit our top 20 in the Dreamcatcher countdown and I really hope to see you there. My fellow K-Pops and Cosmic Bodies, thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to us talk about Dreamcatcher. Please tell me about all your favorite Dreamcatcher things in the comments or maybe another of your favorite groups that have like a dark and or rock sound and concept. I would be interested to know. Anyways, I'll catch you later. Peace!